unlicensed minicabs are dangerous, surprisingly so. The Metropolitan Police have found that 10% of all recorded stranger rapes involve someone posing as a minicab driver. One of these rapists is a Jekyll and Hyde type character. He actually seems quite nice. Washington, please. Girls' night out on a Saturday in London's West End. The bar was closing and I wanted to go out somewhere else. My friends were quite tired, so I suggested that we went home. So I left to make my way home. It was late and she'd had quite a bit to drink, so she was pleased to find a minicab. I remember waking up in the back of the car. I felt very hazy and dizzy and just not quite sure where I was. And then as the man came into the back, I just began to feel that something bad was going to happen. I wasn't going to be able to fight my way out of it or talk my way out of it. He was just very controlling and I'm not frightened of people easily, but it wasn't just the fact that he was physically quite big, just his his tone of voice and the way that he, he kept repeating the same thing to me and, and using my name, making it very personal. later her parents got a strange call hello oh hello there I wonder if you could help me I've been finding some belonging uh, to somebody in your family and would very much like to return who is this oh, I don't want to give name I, I just want to return to you I find uh, uh, a scarf a dress book and a purse where did you find them I find him in, in, in road. I think you better take him straight to the police. No, no, no police, please. I just want to return. Hello? The call was traced to Isleworth, not far from Heathrow Airport. A few days later, her belongings were returned. All of them were examined by forensic scientists, but the best clue was already being processed, DNA. What's more, it matched another rape, and one with remarkable similarities. Another Saturday night, another party, another girl looking for a taxi home. Once again, she'd had a bit to drink. It was late and she was very tired. The only place open was a petrol station, but by what appeared to be a stroke of luck, a customer said he had a minicab. Once again, it was a people carrier, though we're not sure of the make. You've been to pub or club? No, office party. Ah, you have a good time? Yeah, it's great. I wish I could go to party, but <laughs> I, I work too much, you know. I have a 
my own uh, car business, motor car business. Mm. But uh, before motor car business, mm -hmm. I used to do, uh, uh, you know, sale job, sell. Yeah. Sell, not not uh, sell in shop, you know, yeah. uh, uh, sales, sales, yeah. you know, sales. You know. I know this area well, you know, mm -hmm. very well, yes. I'm going to uh, Slough, you know, I, I drive these roads all the time, I know this area well. Tired. <laughs> uh, well, late night, you see. Yeah. Yes. Where are we going? Don't worry, I'm taking you home. We should have gone straight on. Where are you taking me? Just stop the car! Let me out! Let me out! Please! Please! Let me go! Please! I said I will take you home and that is what I will do. It's fine. Okay, my dear. She thinks there was an X, a 9 and a P in the registration. Russell, it's puzzling this on, on so many levels. First of all, his behaviour. On the one hand, he's, he's almost kind to them and then he attacks them. Uh, in my experience, this is the, the, the method that they use. They try uh, to build a rapport with the women. They try to you know, get, build a relationship. When that doesn't work, they resort to, to threats of violence and then actually using physical violence on them to achieve their aim. The description we've got is pretty sketchy. What can you tell us about it? He's a, a, an Asian male, uh, very large build, six foot tall, very stocky build uh, with a round face, got a, a round face with short black hair. And he's got a very strong Indian accent. We've not got a lot to go on, but what about the things when he said when he was in the car? He was talking about his connections to the set, to sales, to the motor car industry, to Slough. Is, is that true, do you think? Again, uh, we, we don't know if that's true. Uh, I personally feel that, you know, that somewhere amongst that there, are, there is an element of truth which exists. The, the fact that he may well be in, in a business interest in Slough, maybe to do with minicabs, it may be to, to do with car sales. So that the, the connection and the, the line that he gives his, his victims, his women, are, you know, there is an element of truth there. What do you make about this phone call? This is another puzzling thing, isn't it? That, that someone rings up uh, with, with, with the belongings of one of the women. What are we supposed to think of that? Again, it may be uh, a completely innocent member of the public who's come by these items and wanted to, to return Let's them just to show their... So there's, there's this purse, this, this red, ready brown leather purse and, and a blue scarf. So, so anyone who may have seen someone with these, uh, they obviously didn't belong to them. That's right. Maybe an innocent member of the public wishing to return them to the family. It may well be the suspect, again, trying to, to, to return them, feeling bad about what's happened and trying to make up for, for the bad and the hurt that he's caused. Okay, well, I should tell you, Russell's been on Crime Watch four times before, and each time he was successful. So let's not break his run of luck now. If you have any information, pick up the phone. And if you think you may have been attacked by the same man, please call us. You might know something that could be the key to catching this man. 0500 600 600, here in the studio, or the instant room, that's 020 8649 2231. And incidentally, if you've been a victim of any crime, the victim support line is on 0845 30 30 900.